When a relay is under test, we need to apply a specific value of voltage or current to simulate signals received under operating conditions. While performing the test, remember that high current or voltage can damage the relay and the test equipment if applied for a lengthy period. It has been proven that a relay's useful life is limited by accumulative thermal duty. This is mainly due to periodic testing rather than from actual power system faults. Make sure that you know the thermal rating from the instruction manual of each relay under test. Keeping these considerations firmly in mind, let's look at relay test sources. First, variable current sources. A traditional method used to measure the pickup of an overcurrent relay is to connect a variable resistor called a load box and an ammeter in series with the relay and to feed this from the station service 115 volt AC source. The relay's output contact is monitored by an indicating light. For time over current tests, we can replace the indicating light by a timer which is started upon relay energization and stopped by the relay's contact closure. We must be careful to begin with a very low value of current and set the ammeter on a high enough range for the expected test current. Also allow the resistance load box to cool off when necessary. This type of test set is usually limited in current output to about 30 amperes. But some relays, such as an instantaneous overcurrent relay, may require, say, 160 amps of test current. This is accomplished by using a variable inductance instead of resistance, sometimes called phantom load. A variable auto transformer known as a variac provides an adjustable input to a step-down test transformer. This in turn supplies low voltage and high current to the relay. When using this arrangement, always make sure that AC input to the variac is connected with the correct polarity. Test set manufacturers offer this type of setup in a single unit, including a contact sense light and a timer. An advantage of the phantom load is that it does not get overheated or consume energy like a resistor. However, take note that it is not suitable for testing high impedance over current relays. This is because the step-down transformer may saturate at high test currents. As a result, the time dial could be set too low with consequent potential for misoperation. Three-phase overcurrent relays such as pilot wire or negative sequence type may use a test current setup like this using variax and ammeters. Variable three-phase voltage test sources can also be connected in a similar fashion. As always, great care must be taken to ensure that connections are correct. Let's look at this Y connection and see what would happen if we reversed the phase and ground connections to the third variac. With all wipers at their lowest position, we have just applied 120 volts to the low impedance current coil. The variac, ammeter, and the relay may have been put out of commission. Speaking of voltage sources, here is a very important testing rule. Never use bus pots, VTs, as a test source unless absolutely necessary. If station service is available, use that. Sooner or later, any one of us could accidentally create a short circuit in our test connections. Blowing a bus pot fuse can cause relay misoperation and tripping. Traditionally, a phase-shifting transformer and phase angle meter have always been used when out-of-phase voltages are required. For example, a synchro-closer check relay. This setup may also be used to check the maximum torque angle of a directional overcurrent relay. This is done by shifting the phase angle of voltage with respect to the test current. Phase shifting transformers require a three-phase input to operate. The phase angle meter's inputs are isolated from each other. So at least with this instrument, we don't have to worry about reversing ground connections and causing short circuits. However, we must observe proper test polarities so that the relay doesn't see quantities 180 degrees out of phase from what it expects. 
We've just been looking at the traditional type of test signal sources. You can see that a comprehensive test setup can be quite complicated and cumbersome. It may take far greater time to set up and check the test equipment than to perform the actual test. Moreover, additional special purpose test equipment is often required. For example, a test diode to produce harmonics for testing the harmonic restraint unit of a transformer differential relay. Frequency relays require a special variable frequency test set. A test resistor and reactor for plotting distance relay characteristics at several impedance angles. Over the past 20 years, this traditional type of test set has been superseded first by solid state and now by digital equipment. A solid state test set allows us to plug into a 120 volt AC single phase source and produce three phase voltage and current quantities at any phase angle and amplitude desired. Adjustment is by means of thumb wheel adjustments within the test set's limits. Each output source has its own on-off switch. In the 1980s, relay manufacturers began producing smart microprocessor controlled relays which can perform many sophisticated functions beyond the reach of previous technology, such as fault location, sensing remote breaker opening without communications, oscillograph plots of recorded faults, and much, much more. Even solid state test equipment could not exercise these relays to verify all of their functions. As we'd expect, relay test set manufacturers rose to the occasion and began producing smart microprocessor controlled test sets. Most utilities are now using this type of testing. What can these units do that previous test sets cannot? Well, quite a bit actually. Up to six units can be connected together with one unit acting as the master for clock synchronization, phase angle reference, and contact sensing. Six voltages and six currents can be turned on simultaneously. Back-to-back -back line pilot protection terminals can be tested for any type of fault. They can also be satellite synchronized for end-to-end -end line protection testing via computer. Where computers are used, the test sets can play back actual faults which were recorded by digital transient recorders, including high-frequency transients. New DC-coupled slave sources can even reproduce DC offsets of voltage and current waveforms. Some digital distance relays have adaptive characteristics which change their reach and angle depending upon pre-fault load parameters. Now, these characteristics can be verified. Under computer control, all output voltages and currents can be changed simultaneously from pre-fault to fault conditions. This same dynamic test capability works well for testing the fault location accuracy of digital relays. Overwhelmed? Well, don't feel lonely. The microprocessor has revolutionized protective relays and testing techniques in an amazingly short period of time. We don't have time in this tape to completely cover the digital test set, but we can look at its basic controls and capabilities. Looking at the front panel of this typical unit, we see that there are two test sources, one voltage and one current. The black output terminals are grounded for protection. These light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, flash to indicate when the outputs exceed 20 volts AC. The default source designations, VA and I1, can be changed by means of flipper switches to keep track of phases when we are doing multi-source testing. We see that both sources have phase angle and magnitude controls. The individual digits can be incremented or decremented by means of these flipper switches. All the sources which we enable by means of these switches will turn on when the single system output button is depressed. Push it again to turn off the sources. The precise point at which each output is energized depends on the setting of this selector switch. Flipping the switch to the right selects source crossing. 
This means that each output will turn on as its sine wave is just crossing zero in the positive direction. This works fine for electromechanical relays where a turn-on time difference of 120 degrees is not noticeable. However, with multi-phase solid-state relays, we should select the system crossing mode. Here, the reference source, such as VA, comes on at its positive going zero crossing. But in addition to this, the other sources, VB and VC, come on at precisely the same instant. Test signals can be produced over a wide range of frequencies. Pressing this flipper switch to the left changes the source's frequency from 60 hertz all the way up to 600 hertz in multiples of 60 hertz. Pressing it to the right changes its source's range, 75, 150, 300 volts AC, or 3.25, 13, 26 amps AC. Let us briefly review the requirements for test sources. Ideally, with a voltage source, the voltage level should remain fixed over the full range of output power. To achieve this, the source impedance should be low with respect to the load impedance. A current source requires that the current level remains constant over the full range of output power. So in this case, the source impedance must be high compared to the load impedance. Current relays should always be tested with a controlled current source since the relay's impedance may change with current level. In fact, if we were to drive a non-linear relay from a voltage source, the current drawn would not be sinusoidal. However, with the current source, the high impedance of the source makes up most of the impedance in the complete circuit. This means changes in relay impedance will have little effect on the total circuit impedance, and thus for all practical purposes, the current will be sinusoidal. What we're really talking about here is the regulation of the source. You will recall that the term regulation describes the amount of variation in the output from zero to full load. Percent regulation equals no load output minus full load output divided by full load output times 100. In this digital test set, both current and voltage sources are considered active, which means they have internal monitoring and self-regulation which compensates, that is, adjusts the output when the load changes. The instruction book tells us that the voltage source can deliver up to 80 volt amperes. This means that once the limit of self-regulation is reached, the source can no longer correct for errors, and the waveform and amplitude begins to stray from ideal values. The output falls rapidly, and the source will go into error. The test set will let us know when this limit is exceeded by beeping and flashing an ER, or error message in the source ID window. The output waveforms are continuously monitored and compared to a precision reference sine wave which is stored as binary data in memory. The error in both magnitude and total harmonic distortion should not exceed 1%. If a voltage error does occur, we can try paralleling two voltage sources as long as the phase angles and magnitudes are kept equal. At times, it becomes necessary to supply more current than a single current channel can supply to a relay element, like an instantaneous overcurrent unit. In this situation, it may be possible to parallel two or several current channels. When current sources are paralleled, the currents will be added vectorially. If you need to have the magnitudes of each channel add up arithmetically, make sure that the phase angles are all equal. This practice cannot be used if the load impedance is high enough to cause an error signal. The error signal is a result of the output voltage being above the design limit. Now, back to the test set. The test set outputs can be selected by this switch to synchronize with line frequency or to be referenced to an accurate crystal which permits variable frequency operation. 
when relay testing is performed in an environment where 60 hertz magnetic fields are present, it is possible that stray induced currents may be added to the currents from the test set. When the test signals are referenced to the crystal time base, a low beat frequency may be detected in the relay response. This beat frequency is the result of the small difference between crystal and line frequencies. By switching to the line sync position, this beat phenomenon can be eliminated. However, this does not mean that the induced current has been canceled and test results may be affected by the unwanted magnetic field interference. To verify that no appreciable error is being caused by the induced current, repeat the same test with all signals rotated by 180 degrees. We are still using line synchronization. If the results are the same, then the interference is negligible. If not, a way to reduce or eliminate the interference must be found. In any case, choosing the crystal as the usual synchronizing mode allows you to detect the presence of induced currents and take whatever action is required. Finally, we arrive at the timer section of the panel. This reset switch resets the timer to zero after a test. This switch, to the left, selects source one or source two as the timer start. To the right, it selects source off to on or on to off for timer start. The bottom switch selects the timer stop mode. This side panel contains connection ports to external devices such as a computer, other master units, and slave units. Slave units may include a high current source which can provide up to 160 amps at 500 VA capacity, a battery simulator, variable DC current and voltage sources, 3.25 amps and 300 volts at 62 watts. Now your particular test set may not be identical with the unit demonstrated, but it will certainly have similar features and controls. We recommend that you get lots of practice in operating this equipment manually. This will enable you to become familiar with its functions and capabilities before attempting computer-controlled testing. When you do advance to automated testing, I think you'll enjoy watching the computer push the buttons and vary the test quantities for you. Whew. At this point, we all deserve a break. Please switch off the tape now and review this material in your workbook. Thank you.